Hi, I'm Lisa and welcome to my Oso oh Gecko channel. Today we're making the Audrey. It's a very angular shaped, medium sized shoulder bag. It's perfect for confident beginners or intermediate sewers. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any future videos. And you can also join my Facebook group, the Cork Fabric Sewing Corner, where you can chat, share ideas, ask for advice, and of course, share any of your cork fabric creations with everyone else in the group. There'll be timestamps all the way through the instructions. So if you want to go directly to a certain point, um, you can easily navigate through. So let's have a look at the Audrey. Um, as I've said, it's a medium shaped bag. Um, all of these bags here have of course been made with cork fabric since that's what I do, but you can create this bag in any fabric medium that you like. It can be vinyl, um, leather, cottons, canvas, anything you like. So the bag has a feature front pocket, um, which is a slip pocket as you can see. And on the back, it has been left completely blank. So if you wanted to, you could leave off the front pocket and perhaps do some embroidery or something on there. Of course, you could still keep the front pocket on there and do embroidery instead, um, but it's brilliant for any feature panels that you might have. The bag handles have been added using um, invisible strap tabs. Of course, if you are using a frame material, there is um, a different way of attaching the straps, like this one, which can go in at the top if you prefer. Inside the bag, it opens with a zip, and if we look inside, you'll see there is a zip pocket here. The other side, on the front, there isn't anything, but again, you could add another zip pocket, you could add a slip pocket, anything you like. If we open up the zip pocket and have a look inside, wrong angle, you can see we've got some card slot pockets. Um, so there are space for six cards in there and then obviously there's some space in front for your mobile phone or your keys or whatever and then behind the card slots there's actually more space so you could put some change or some banknotes or whatever in behind that for you. If you're a beginner sewer and maybe not quite so confident um, obviously you can um, omit the inside pocket, the card slots, we can just not do those. However, um, lots of things to learn when making this bag. So obviously we're introducing zips, we've got the slip pocket, the internal zip pocket, the card slots, we've got some boxed corners as well, loads and loads of different things that you can learn. If you've never sewn with cork fabric before and you're a little bit nervous about it, then of course join the Facebook group, the Cork Fabric Sewing Corner, the link will be in the comments below, um, and you can ask for any help or advice that you need. So let's get started. Can't wait to see what your Audrey looks like. So to start, we take our pattern pieces five. These are the two front feature pocket panels. Um, these are both quilting cotton so I've interfaced them with a medium weight non-woven fusible interfacing. So we're going to start, I'm going to put one piece aside and I'm going to turn over the other piece. I'm going to measure down one centimeter from that V point and make a mark. The purpose of doing this is so as when we're sewing, we've got a reference point of where we need to stop so we can make sure that it maintains that perfect V shape for the feature on the front. Depending on how confident you are, we're also going to stitch a one centimetre seam allowance on the bottom. So if you're new to sewing, again, you can just measure up one centimetre in the middle and at either side. So then that will give you a stitch line to, um, to sew along. I'm going to take our other 
cutting piece five. There, make sure you can see it. And then I'm going to lay this one right sides together. So this one is facing up, this one is facing down. I'm going to put them right sides together, making sure that I have matched up all the way around my feature panel actually is ever so slightly not big enough um, if you've noticed um, my interface is going off as well but that's okay because this little bit that I've got at the side will lose that in the seam allowance so it's okay I'm going to take some clips and I'm going to clip across the top Okay, so I've trimmed off both sides and I've just chipped into this a little bit using my scissors, being very careful not to cut my stitches through. So now we're just going to reach in and pull through to the other side, fold down. Make sure that's nice and crisp. Okay. And fold that out at the bottom. And I'm going to take this over to the ironing board and just press that nice and flat. Now that's pressed nicely. I'm going to top stitch just the top edge. Again, being very mindful of this point that we want to keep. Let's try and put on. We'll put that to one side for the moment. We'll take one of each of the pattern piece two, one facing one way, one facing the other way. We'll take one of our pattern piece one. These ones I have already interfaced with my Decaville light. There is the option to sew these pattern pieces together first and then add your Decaville light afterwards. I've done it this way because the Decaville light that I had was weird shapes and I couldn't actually get one large piece. So I'll put one piece to the side for the moment. So we've got our pattern piece one, which is the right side up. And I'm going to take one of my pattern piece two and I'm going to put them right sides together, lining up these corners here. And we're going to clip those in place, making sure our points and sides are lined up. Now I'm going to take that over to the sewing machine and I'm going to do a one centimeter seam allowance using a 2.5 millimeter stitch length or depending on your cork fabric you might want to do a three millimeter stitch length it would depend on what you're using so the seam naturally wants to go towards the middle however i'm going to force it the other way. Um, I'm going to try and push it behind the outside panel. The reason for that is to keep it laying nice and flat, especially when we've got our front pocket on the other side. So now I'm going to top stitch this with a three millimeter stitch length, three millimeters from the edge of that join, making sure that I include my seam allowance there. You might need to push it down a little bit to get it to stay. Okay, okay. So it's stitched all along that edge and it's stitched this going out towards the side panel. Okay. That's 
one side and I'm going to repeat that with the other side. Okay, so there we have it. It's our, this one is our back panel. So now we're going to move over and do the front panel. So taking pattern piece one, one of our pattern piece one, I've made two marks up from the bottom on either side of the piece. Um, that measurement can be found in the instructions of your pattern. Then I'm going to take our finished feature pocket, Let's turn this around, and I'm going to line up the bottom of our feature panel with those two lines. It's not easy doing this upside down. Okay, so I've lined that up with those two lines. I'm going to take that round again just so it's easier for me. And I'm going to make sure that the top corners are lined up right the way along. I'll take some clips. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to baste down these two sides and top stitch across the very bottom of the pocket piece. Okay, so I'm going to start at the top here. I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom, across the bottom, and then back up the other side. So now across the bottom here, I'm just going to stitch again um, for decorative purposes and obviously for a little bit more security. There we go. Just looks a little bit prettier on the bottom. So now, the same as we did before, we're going to take our other two pattern pieces too, and we're going to do exactly as we did before, lining up the corners, one centimetre seam allowance on each side, stitching twice to make sure we don't have any pulling, and then folding back, keeping the seam allowance behind the outer panels the same as before. So we have our two panels, our back panel and front panel. Now we need to add the top and put the back panel out of the way again. Just working with our front panel and I'm going to take pattern piece three which is this one here. So we notice it's shorter and longer here. So on our front panel, we're going to take our pattern piece three and we're gonna turn it upside down. So right sides together and the longer edge is going to match up with our top edge here. Now you will notice it is ever so slightly longer. That's okay. What we can do is we will find the midpoint by folding it in half. Okay, now we've got our midpoint there. And we'll find the midpoint of our panel. Now you have a choice, you can mark this, you can snip it, entirely up to you. I'm just going to fold it because I know I'll get a lovely crease there. I'm just going to match up my two creases into the middle. So if you want, you can mark it or snip a little piece out, whichever is your preference. So we'll clip that into place. Making sure, of course, that these seams they're still facing out. They should be okay because we've stitched them down. So now I'm going to stitch across the top here. Okay, so I've double stitched this. Now I'm going to push this up top. Again, making sure that my seam allowance here is behind this panel and not behind my centre panel. The reason we do that is obviously to keep the bulk out of middle center panel we don't want big lumpy lines here and now i'm going to top stitch 
down this edge here with a three millimeter stitch length and a three millimeter seam allowance or eighth of an inch. So I'm just going to cut off these little ooh, extra thread, cut off these little extra bits and line this up on both sides. If it's not completely even, it doesn't matter too much so long as these little pieces have gone. We are going to do a one centimetre seam allowance again when we next stitch. So if you've just got a little bit of an overhang like I have, it doesn't matter, it's okay. So we're just gonna cut off these little pieces. There we are. And that's our front panel finished. So now we're gonna do exactly the same thing with the back panel. The cardstock pieces actually get printed onto four sheets of paper. Now you do not need to print this. You can um, have a look in the pattern instructions. It will tell you exactly what length and width to cut in your fabric. And it also gives you um, the marked points of where you're going to fold for your card slots. So you do not need to print this piece. Um, you can just follow the pattern instructions. Um, you need to put it together as in 6A, 6B, 6C and then 6D, 6E, and 6F at the bottom. So what I did was I joined A, B, and C, and then I joined D, E, and F, and then I joined the two pieces together, which worked quite nicely for me. So then we come to, our, oh, before we come to our folding, you will notice that once you've put it together, it actually says top, okay? So this will be the top of your fabric. So if you have got directional fabric, you need to make sure that your directional fabric, this is the top, so this is the bottom, and this piece here is the piece that we will see from A downwards. This is where we will see um, when your card slots are all put together. So if you have something on the front, then that would need to go there. So I'm gonna show you on this how to fold it so as there is no confusion when you come to folding your fabric. I also would suggest that you fold your paper before your fabric and then it makes it much much easier when you're actually doing the fabric folding. So obviously we're going to start at A and then we've got B, C, D and E. So starting with A I'm going to turn my page over and I'm going to fold back oops, caught up, to point A, okay, so find my two point A, lines up at the side as well, and I'm going to fold that across, okay, so that's my point A folded, I'm going to turn it back, now my point A is going to meet at line B. Okay, so I'm folding my point A line up to point B. Okay, and I'm going to form a crease there on the piece behind. Okay. Now I'm going to turn my page over and again I'm going to fold it back this time at point C. So if I fold at point C carefully, there we go. See, now I have one crease for my card slots. Okay, let's fold all that down. Turn it back over. Ooh, doesn't want to bend because it's out okay. I'm going to take my point C and I'm going to get up to D. Okay, so make sure it's on both sides. Up to point D, more or less. Just keep all that in. Okay, this time obviously I'm creasing the bottom. And then what's left is point E, which we're going to 
fold back and if we've done it right more or less it should meet up with the bottom oh i obviously haven't stuck mine straight that's okay doesn't matter too much okay. so that's folded a point e and if i turn that over we've got one two spaces ready for our cards so now you just need to do that with your fabric, which should be slightly easier once you've done it with your paper. So on your fabric, you're going to mark your points A, B, C, D and E on both sides. And then you fold in the same way and use your iron to press your fabric in place. And then that should fold up quite nicely. If you have a little bit left over at the bottom, just trim it up nice and neatly. So now that that's pressed nicely, I'm going to take each one of these, I'm going to fold back the front two, you can see that, one, two, I'm going to fold those back and I'm going to top stitch across the top of the first pocket using a three millimeter stitch length and a three millimeter seam allowance, one eighth of an inch. And I've done that one, fold, this one out of the way back and then I'll do the same with my second panel and then I'm going to fold this one out of the way and do the same with my third panel. Right, I don't know how well you can see that. Um, blends a little bit too well with this but each one of these is now top stitch but they are not stitched together okay so they're all separate but we've just top stitched each one so what we're now going to do is we're going to baste down each side of this card pocket to hold everything together so we have our wide card slots now we need to make our sections so in the pattern um, you have the measurements for your card slots you will notice that the measurements from either side are different um, and the reason for that I will give you when we come to do our zip pocket um, but for the moment just go with it so you will see I've got one, two, three, four measurements. Now it's really important that when you're measuring, your first measurements must go from the edge of the fabric and not from your stitching. Okay, if you measure from your stitching, then your card spaces won't be big enough. And then I'm gonna stitch all the way up each one using a three millimeter stitch length. So we've got our one, two, three card slots. What we're now going to do, which is really important, is we're actually going to test that our cards fit in the card slots because if we don't check this now and we put everything together and then if we've stitched wrong, right at the end, we're going to be really disappointed because our cards don't fit. So it is quite snug. Oh, that one's cosy, but it's okay. Five and six so they are quite cozy but that's okay the idea being that obviously nobody can steal your cards out of your bag so that's all finished and we're going to put that to one side these are the two internal zip pocket pieces so we're going to start with one to begin with i'm going to put one to one side and i'll just turn it around a little bit for you so now this is my top this is the bottom we're going to line up the card slots with the bottom edge of our pocket panel so now we're going to baste 
around one, two, three sides of our car pocket to attach it to the back panel. Okay, so that's our panel with three at the top, but just basted on around there to say this side is not closed in that's going to stay open like that it's something nice and neat to put your phone in or i don't know some cash or whatever right so we've got our two pattern piece four which is our front and back lining panels um it really doesn't matter which one you choose i think well actually i think mine are identical almost um i think i'm going to choose this one um, this one is going to have the inside zip pocket attached so when you open your bag um, this will be what you see on the back inside panel of your bag so choose whichever one it is that you want to see when you open your bag as your back panel we're going to turn it sideways because camera angle um, and I'm going to find the midpoint of the top and the bottom this time I'm actually going to snip a little piece just a tiny little triangle off the top and off of the bottom um, because we will need these measurements again so if we do it now then we don't have to worry about creases disappearing so there you go I don't know if you can see there's just a tiny little V cut out the top and the bottom that will go inside the seam allowance so it won't matter now I'm going to measure down a length that you will find in your pattern it will tell you how far to measure down and in from the sides so I have my measurements don't know if you can see there I've got one two three little marks there um, what I'm now going to do is take my other pattern piece 11. This is the one without the card slots. Okay, so we want the extra piece that doesn't have the card slots. And we are going to make sure that it is facing the right way up. So the longer edge should be across the top and the shorter edge down the sides. Let's say it is a rectangle, so make sure you get it the right way around. I'm going to fold that in half like we did before and find the midpoint it's going to snip a little piece out of there and the same on the bottom let's find that right across right. what i'm now going to do is i'm going to put that right side down so we've got right sides together and I'm going to line up my pattern piece 11, my two Vs, so as I know it's center, and then I'm lining up the top of my pattern piece 11 with the line that I marked across earlier. Okay. I'm gonna take some pins, which is unusual for me as I am I do usually use clips, but we're going to use some pins today, both fabric, hold those in place. So using the measurements in the pattern piece, you can see that I have drawn a box. And down the centre of this box, I'm going to draw a line. Center. and at the end of that line I'm going to do a lovely V shape so what we're now going to do is we're going to stitch around the outside of our box being very careful when we get to the corners to make sure that we drop down um, our stitch length um, from 2.5 to two just before we get to the corner drop it down to two 
come along back down this side and then when we get to here we're going to go back up to 2.5s all the way along until we get to the end here drop it back down to a two so as we can meet the point of that corner turn and come back round to join up the other side Now, we're going to be very brave and we're going to cut a down this centre line. Let's see if we find my scissors. I normally do this with a rotary cutter, actually. So I do prefer a rotary cutter, so I'm just going to fold it in half and very gently snip a little hole in there. I'm big enough for my scissors. And I'm just going to cut down this way, cut down this way, and get to that point. Now I'm going to cut as close as I can to my stitches without actually cutting through them. And it's really important that you get as close as possible to your stitches because it will help the corners to lay flat when we turn through. Okay, so I'm just going to check. Yeah, that's pretty close. Okay, right. So my next tip for doing zips is I'm actually going to press with the iron my pocket piece before I turn through. So I'm going to press it flat this way. Then I'm going to press this side, fold up the side and press here and the other side and press here. And I'm going to do that with the iron and the reason that I do that is it actually helps to push the fabric through and to get those corners really lovely, nice and sharp. So now we're going to push all of this through our hole that we've made. Turn this over. So we're going to pull our pocket piece through. Well, turn it back. Just gonna roll that seam a little all the way around and you'll see that by ironing it now actually it's gone through quite nicely um, it's bouncing a little bit but that's okay our corners don't have too much puckering on them we can certainly iron that out so I'm going to get the iron and just flatten the fabric down this way Let's add our zip. So I've already added my zip pull. Um, my zip obviously opens to the right and closes to the left. It's really important that you add your zip so as it closes to the left and opens on the right. The reason for that is because of our card slots. So if we bring back our card slots very quickly as I said when we were doing this, the measurement on the left is different to the measurement on the right. And the reason for that is, if I can just demonstrate, when we've got our zip on here, when we open our zip, and I'm really careful not to pull the zip pull off, when we pull our zip open, it's going to stop about here. If we had done the same measurement both sides, we wouldn't be able to get into these card slots. So if my zip is the wrong way round, like this, it's going to make it really difficult for me to get my cards in and out on this side. So we need to make sure that the zip, when closed, closes over on the left. 
and open on the right. Okay, perfect. Let's get rid of this. Let's move this out of the still. So it's entirely up to you how you do this. You can use some glue, you can use double sided tape. It's entirely up to you. So we're going to attach our zip. Um, we're going to turn our pattern piece the wrong side up so we can see the back of our opening here. I'm going to add some double sided tape to the back opening. Now I'm not putting it too close to the edge here because obviously we're going to top stitch but I do need it close enough that it's going to hold on to the zip. This one. Ooh. And the same at the top, not too close because obviously we're going to top stitch. There. Right now, if I'm really lucky, oh, today's my lucky day. I'll pull one. Let me pull the other one. It is. Wow. Okay. Now, remembering which way we need our zip pull, this is now upside down. So we're going to take our zip and turn it upside down. making sure that our zipper pull is closing the correct way get that sort of halfway there and then I'm going to flip it over now my zip is the wrong way around if we look it's opening this way and I it's that way so turn that back over that way And now it's going the right way. So now we've got that, we're gonna wiggle this around a little bit until we've got the zip exactly halfway between the spaces. Starting at the top here, I'm going to top stitch using a three millimeter stitch length and three millimeter seam allowance of one eighth of an inch. I'm going to top stitch around down the end here, being very careful of this zip here. So maybe go a little bit more slowly. Down across the bottom, we need to move the zip out of the way to come past it, up the top, up the side, and back down to, and back to the top where we started from. that is our zip fitted closed on the left and open on the right perfect so main piece right side down and pocket piece facing up we're going to lay our card slots right side down with the card slots at the bottom we're going to line up the top and side edges and we're going to clip those in place so we're going to sew around three sides so we're going to start at the bottom corner here we're going to sew up to the top across the top and back down the other side we are not closing up this bottom seam here because we're actually going to turn our bag through at this bottom pocket here we're not turning the bag through through the lining we're going to turn it through the pocket so make sure you don't sew up this bottom pocket piece because you won't be able to turn your bag through okay, i'm actually going to sew from this side so i'm going to pull put it this way up and pull this out of the way so it makes it much much easier to see what you're doing. So what we're now going to do is using the iron, we're going to 
try, we're going to attempt to press up a one centimetre hem on the bottom of this pocket. Um, the reason for that is to make it easier when we turn through later on, it makes it much, much easier to stop to, uh, to top stitch. So um, I find it's easier if you have the card slot pocket up and you fold towards that. If you try and fold it the other way, sometimes the card slot pocket gets a little bit bunched and things, so I find this works quite nicely. So we're just going to fold it up, all layers of the bottom, about a centimeter. It is quite tricky because that card slot pocket does not want to do it. And we're just going to press that just to give us a bit more of a crease, make it a little bit easier at the end. So that's our inside linings finished. We're not putting anything on the other lining. So we will put both linings over to one side. We've got our four pieces for our strap tabs and our four rectangle rings. I'm just going to put three of those to the side and we'll start working on this one. Um, so what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to find the midpoint on the long edge. Sounds nice and squeaky. And I'm just going to mark that so as you can see it. I can see it fairly well. I'm just going to mark that for you. And then I'm going to take some double-sided tape, if I can find the end of it, yeah, there it is, let's find some double-sided tape and I'm going to put that along that centre line, smooth that out a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the sides in to meet that centre line. Okay. If you haven't got double sided tape it doesn't matter, you can just fold it in and clip it into place, it's entirely up to you. And what I'm now going to do is I'm going to top stitch down the two long edges using a three millimeter stitch length and a three millimeter seam allowance and I'm going to do that on all four pieces. If you are choosing to do the zip strap tabs um, you can add a rivet here now. I would probably measure down um, about a centimeter maybe three eighths of an inch. Remember of course that you're going to have a seam allowance here of um, a centimetre when you come to sew those on at the top so make sure that your rivet isn't too far down otherwise you're going to struggle to come past that. If you are doing the um, invisible strap tabs you do not need to add rivets here we're going to add them later on. Okay, so you're going to take your completed front outer panel. Now, as you can see, this is not a front outer panel because, as I said before, um, silly me, my camera um, stopped filming. So, um, this is where we are going to attach the um, invisible strap tab. So, it will be concentrated on the top panel of your front outer panel and your back outer panels so yours will be completed obviously mine is just the top section so we're going to turn that over and you'll see that I have marked mine already so to start with you're going to find the center which I have marked here okay. and then you're going to measure down to a point which is in the pattern instructions. Okay, so we've got our midway point and we're going to measure down to the point in your pattern instructions. From there you're going to measure to a point a distance from that center which is also in your pattern instructions. Okay, so we're going to measure this way a distance and then we're going to measure from the center to here 
Okay, so these points here now become points two. Okay, so one here, one here. From your points two, let me show you on this one, you're going to measure a distance either side. Okay, so your point two, measure a distance either side, and you do that on both sides. Okay, so using my craft knife, I'm going to join up these points. So you'll now see that I've got one, two holes. Okay, and these holes are for our strap tabs to go through. I'm very quickly going to burn, you see I've got some little fluffy bits here. I'm gonna burn these so they don't cause a problem later on. Tie onto the back. Just make sure that's all sealed. Okay, so I'm going to take one of my strap tabs, I'm going to fold it in half quickly, and then I'm going to push one end through the slit that I've made, um, wrong side up, okay, so I've got the right sides together. Now, as you can see, I don't know if you can see that, mine is a little bit too big to go through, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my craft knife and I'm just going to cut a tiny little bit wider, Be super, super careful. the smallest little bit okay and now that will go through don't cut it too big um, but you will need to cut it big enough that it doesn't pull too much on that so I'm going to turn that over okay. and I'm going to pull that through as far as it tells you in the measurements in the pattern okay I'll turn that back now I'm going to sew across here above the slit okay so i'm not sewing across the slit here i'm sewing above it through the back here and through the strap tab that will then hold that strap tab in place okay so as you can see i've stitched across here but i can still put my finger in that little slit So now we're going to take our rectangle ring, that bar across there, and I'm going to feed it through the strap tab. And then the end of the tab, I'm going to push through that slot, I'll turn over, and I'm going to pull it through. Okay, let's pull that down. Now, we need to make sure that our strap is nicely in place there. Okay. Make sure we haven't got too much coming through. Turn it over. Now, you will see that these are two different lengths. That's good, that's what we want. We need this because if they are the same length, it will create bulk. Um, behind there and we don't really want that so okay so, so now I'm going to do the same on this side exactly the same procedure and I'm going to put two rivets in here to hold it we're taking our zip this is the longer of the two zips and we are going to measure four centimeters from the end of the zip. Now the zip pull is open to my right and closed to my left, okay? So we're measuring in four centimeters from the left side when the zipper is closed. We're going to take our 
zipper, pull it apart a little. Now, and if you can see my line here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the zip along that line, pinch it, and you'll see that this whoop, automatically wants to bend. And I'm going to fold where I've pinched up to the zip. So now you can see it goes round in a nice curve. Take one of my pins. I'm going to pin that in place. Repeat that on the other side. So here's my line. I'm going to pinch at that line and fold the pinched line up to meet the zip, the zip teeth. Take a pin and pin that in place. So now using a two and a half millimeter stitch length, I'm just going to baste this in place along this line here just to hold these. So we're going to take our ruler and we're going to measure down 24 and a half centimetres, which is nine and a half inches. And we are going to make a mark. Turn that around, do the same on this side. And we're going to cut that end off. Be brave. Okay, save that for a different project. And there's our zip. So now we're going to prepare our zip tab. Place this to one side. And bring over our pattern piece eight. Um, it's just one. It doesn't have any interfacing. So first of all, we are going to fold our pattern piece eight in half. And then we're gonna fold it in half or each side into the center. that in place. Okay, so there's our strap tab nicely pressed. Take our zipper, Ooh, a bit of fluff, and take some clips and I'm going to place the end of the zip lined up with the end of the zip tab so it meets right up to here. Use one clip, two clips. You can, if you want, fold these side edges in as well. Um, but we're going to actually stitch right the way around anyway, and these you won't see them afterwards. So it's entirely up to you. If you want to, you can fold these edges in as well. I'm not going to bother. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to top stitch across the zip holding this zip tab in place. You might need a zipper foot to do this to keep your clips in, um, otherwise sometimes it tends to move a little bit. See how you go. There we go. Okay, so it's just stitched across here. Make sure that you have caught the back in. I have done it sometimes where I've missed the back. Um, so make sure that you have caught the back into your stitching. And now we're just going to cut down these two sides to make it the same width. Scissors. Okay, and that's our zip ready prepared. Okay, so it's time to put our bag together. So I've got my completed uh, outer front panel and the lining panel without 
the zip pocket, okay? The one without the card pocket, the one that we haven't done anything to. Those two and our zip. So I'm gonna put the lining fabric over to one side for the moment. And I'm gonna hold these down. Get some tape. A little bit of sticky tape. It's okay, it will pull off afterwards. It doesn't washi tape, anything. Just a bit of sticky tape, just to hold those down out of the way. So, we're going to take our zip and we're going to place it, uh, we're going to find the midpoint. So, let's find the midpoint first. I'm going to fold it in half. I'm just going to take my scissors and just snip tiny little bit off. Um, zipper tape should be fine, it shouldn't fray. It's perfectly okay doing that. Let's do that on the other side as well because we will need it. Just a tiny little piece off of that. We're also going to find the midpoint of our panel. So line up our two centre pieces. Line that up in the flap because I've got the fan on. It's incredibly hot here today. Blowing fluff everywhere. Let me just find the midpoint of that. There we go, I can see that. And actually while we're there, I think we'll find the midpoint of this as well. Now, when you find the midpoint, you need to make sure that the two seams here meet together. It's incredibly important because this is where it's gonna line up nicely underneath. So your corners should line up as well, but the seams are where we're lining up. And we'll just fold that across and find our midpoint. And again, just a tiny little snip. It will be in the seam allowance. You won't see it. It's fine. So let's go back. So we're going to take our zip. Remember, left side when closed. I'm going to place that right side down. Ooh. Now the webs are joining us. Right side down, let's move this zip hole out of the way for a minute. And I'm going to line up those two centre points. Now you'll notice that we've got about one centimetre from either edge, which is perfect. That is our one centimetre seam allowance. So your zip should be ever so slightly short. Um, that's intentional to keep the zip out of your seam allowance. There's nothing worse than going over a zip. Always makes me jump. Okay. So now I'm going to stitch along here with a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay. And I'm using a two and a half millimetre stitch length. take a lining panel and same again I'm going to find the midpoint We've got our outer panel right side up. We can see the back of our zip there. And I'm going to place the lining panel right side down. And I'm gonna line up that center point with the center point of the zip. So line up those two. Now I'm going to stitch from this side because all I'm going to do is I'm going to follow that same stitch line that I did before um, and that way I know that it's all even. Okay, so I'm going to open that out and fold those so they are wrong sides together. 
I'm going to flatten this out so we have a nice flat seam at the top. Line up the bottom edges as we can. Now we're going to top stitch across this top edge using a three millimeter stitch length, a three millimeter or one eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so now we're going to repeat that same process on the other side. Um, I've already found the midpoint at the top of this one, so I'm just going to find the midpoint at the bottom. Snip that little. sides together for the outers. I'm going to put the back panel face down, lining up with the midpoint of the zipper tape that we made earlier and we'll clip that together. Let's turn that over. It's actually easier to stitch from this side. Okay. So as before I'm going to stitch across the zip with a quarter inch seam allowance um, starting and stopping at the edge of the zip. I'm not going right the way to the end because we will need to keep those ends free to be able to sew the bag together. You'll notice on these I've done the same. So now same again as we did before. We'll take our lining panel already found the midpoints on this one. Move our zip out of the way. It doesn't matter which way, just move it out of the way, it makes it a little bit easier. So lining side up, other one lining side down. And we're going to line up this with the top of the zip. Okay, so this one's attached here, we're attaching to the top piece here. So turn that over and again we're going to stitch right on top of this same line, maybe making it a little bit neater. And we're going to top stitch across this top edge, keeping that zip out of the way using a 3mm stitch loop. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open it out and we're going to open this zip pocket. It needs to be open because if we don't open it now, we won't be able to get into our bag um, to pull it through. So remember we're pulling through through this pocket here. So make sure you don't forget to open your zip pocket. So now I'm going to take both the lining pieces and I'm going to join them together, lift it up and flip that over. So I don't know how well you can see, my camera angle isn't fantastic, but on this side I've got the two lining pieces and on this side I've got the two cork pieces. So the first and important thing we're going to do is we're going to line up these centre seams. So I'm going to undo my zip a little bit because it does make things a little bit awkward. Now we're lining up the cork side with the cork side and the fabric side with the fabric side. And so we're going to try and line those up as best we can. Clip that. The same on this side. Clip that. Okay. Hold this down. Line up 
the bottom corners of the lining. And we're going to line up the bottom corner of the cork. Bearing in mind we need to line up these two seams here. So this here is more important than this corner. Okay, because this seam we will see and this corner we won't see. If we're a little bit out, it's better to be out here where it won't be seen than here at this seam. So line up this seam first, clip that in place, clip just under it and just before it. Okay. And then we're going to line up this bottom corner, which actually does meet, so that's good. Another clip in the middle. And then here at the bottom again, we're going to line up these two seams. This is more important again than this corner here, actually, as it goes, it's okay. So we'll put a clip in there, a clip in there, turn that around on the other side. Again, we're lining up those two seams. These are really important because this is what you will see on the bottom of your bag when we turn it through. So this is really, really important. So again, one clip that side, one clip this side, stop it from shifting. Actually, the bottom of it meets up nicely. You can see with the heat, my Decaville is actually starting to lift. Um, it's about 43 degrees here today, so um, yeah, don't think Decaville likes 43 degrees. <laughs> and then here we're going to come around this side, we're going to meet up these two seams here. Clip and clip. Go down to the bottom, actually meets up nicely, so that's good. So that's our outer panel here all clipped together then we're going to go over and do the lining side um, the lining side again we need to make sure that this center here is lined up nicely the top cork side one one side one the other and then we're just going to go around and clip the other sides zip pocket open and oh silly me Side. didn't actually leave the bag zip open so we're going to unclip this if you haven't left your zip open inside undo there reach in and unzip your bag a little bit more it's always good to do that anyway it puts your zipper pull right in the center which means you're not likely to sew over it let's clip that back down again Okay, so I'm going to start stitching here on my cork side and I'm going to sew all the way down one side, starting and stopping, back stitching both sides. Then I'm going to jump over here. We're not stitching across here. I'm going to jump and start stitching across the bottom all the way to the other side, back stitching beginning and end and then up this side back stitching bottom uh, start and end and then I'm going to continue sewing down to here back stitching when I finished across the bottom back stitching start and end and then back up the other side to meet up with our original stitching I'll be doing a one centimeter seam allowance and a two and a half millimeter stitch length and on the cork side I will be double stitching as we did earlier when we were putting together our panels um, obviously that stops the thread pulling what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the seams these two corners and I'm going to press the seam allowance so as they are 
nested together and they're going away from each other if we have them both going the same way it ends up really really bulky so we're just gonna press them together like that click that together and then i'm going to wrestle with this a little bit more see if i can turn it like that so this way a little bit difficult with the camera angle um, and what I need to do is I need to get these corners nicely lined up okay, I'm also going to put some clips along the sides here. the most important part of this is that this center seam meets with this one for at least your one centimeter seam allowance if it only meets here at the end and then is off a little bit further down um, then your seams won't meet together so we need to make sure that here in the center that these seams are nested for at least this section here Okay, so I'm going to stitch across here with a one centimeter seam allowance and a two and a half millimeter stitch length and I'm going to double stitch again like we have on all our other seams. Okay, so all four corners are boxed. I've trimmed down the edges on the cork. I'm just gonna trim down the fabric side as well to about half reduce that bulk a little bit loosen it up okay we're ready to turn it through Let's see what our bag looks like and see if we've actually managed to sew straight so we're going to reach into our pocket which hopefully we've left the zip open if we haven't then we're going to have to try and reach in and uh, pull it through and also the zip pocket inside needs to be open now we only opened that halfway so we're going to try and reach in open that the rest of the way okay so i would suggest pulling through the lining fabric first so we're just going to take the lining fabric and reach in here reach through there and pull through our lining first see how well this works there we go finally okay, let's just put that lining through Ooh. well that was a workout okay so where we've pulled it through it is a little bit crumpled that's okay it will soon settle out we've just got to push it back into place the cork the wrinkles will go in the cork so long as it's good quality it will be fine okay well i think i'm quite happy with that make sure you check everything make sure you haven't got any holes anywhere right now to close up this zip pocket now as i said earlier it's a little bit tough because this card slot does not want to bend it will not want to go um but it has to so you'll see where we ironed earlier it should still have a little bit of a bend in it that is really going to help us now so we're just going to push in that card slot first clip all the way along okay so now all we're going to do is we've clipped our inside pocket together we're just going to sew along here with a two and a half millimeter stitch length or three millimeter stitch length whichever is easiest for you and a three millimeter seam allowance just to close up that pocket or you could of course hand stitch it if you prefer with okay so let's make the handles so we've got our two pattern piece 10 i'm just going to put one to the side for the moment let's start working on one so we're going to fold in half let's press that down okay no 
I don't know if you can see that, but I can see that. We've got a um, crease right way down the centre. And then I'm going to take my then I'm going to take my double-sided tape. And I'm going to run that. either side of that center line I'm not going to put it on the center line because it's not going to be able to hold both sides of this cork bounce back too much I'm going to fold this edge into the center line so I can still see it let me just mark it there for you there's my center crease right the way down there so I'm just going to fold this into the center and stick it down with that double-sided tape I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to top stitch down the two long edges with a three millimeter seam allowance and a three millimeter stitch length i'm also going to go around the shorter ends too and i'm going to back stitch beginning and end let's attach our straps to the bag so here's our bag uh, we need to make sure that the folded edge is underneath so i'm going to put it through and I'm going to pull through about two and a half centimetres or an inch. Two and a half centimetres or an inch. Now you have a choice. You can stitch across here using a zipper foot, stitch across, down, across and back up or do an X if that's what you prefer. Or you can do what I'm going to do and I'm going to just use a couple of rivets. Um, I think that will be absolutely found this bag isn't going to be under any tremendous um, weight or stress. So I think it should be fine. 